Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Ginger on Wheels here again. Thanks for stopping by the channel where we get to test and unbox the latest electrically wheeled gadgets. Today is a very sad day for me. I have to give back two of my favorite scooters to Rev Rides, the VSET 9 Plus and the VSET 10 Plus. But before I do, I figure since I won't have a full arsenal anymore, I might as well go through what I do have right now, all my different gadgets, scooters and unicycles and bikes and show you what they are. Just give you like a quick overview of some scooters. Maybe it'll help you in your decision making if you're shopping for a scooter or just show you some really cool electric gadgets. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll roll the intro and let's get to looking at all these scoops. All right, I guess the easiest way to do this for me is just to start from left to right and I'll go one by one and show you all the different gadgets I have. If anybody needs a kitchen table, I do have one for sale. All right, first up, this is the Gotway or Bagode. They changed their name, uh, RS. They changed their name because they keep catching on fire, which is why I invented the fire sack, which is that fireproof bag back there. But this unicycle tops out around 40 miles an hour with me on it. It's got two charging ports on the top here, as well as a USB port, so I can charge my phone and stuff from it. Power button on top also turns on the lights. It's got a strobe function, which is pretty cool, and some lights that change colors down here every time you cycle through. Uh, it's got a speedometer on here that's pretty worthless. You can't really see it. It's in kilometers per hour, but it does have a new motherboard in it, which is a black color. And with that new motherboard, you can flash the firmware to show miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour on the speedometer. But as it stands right now, it just shows kilometers per hour because I barely use it anyways. I'm too busy trashing this thing, as you can tell. These are just some pads that I kind of slapped together. I uh, beat this thing up pretty badly regularly off-road, so it's not in the best working condition. As you can see here, the uh, trolley handle has seen better days, <laughs> but it's got a really nice knobbly off-road tire, cool lights. Um, it does have two built-in Bluetooth speakers that still work, even though I've completely crashed this wheel. Um, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite gadgets just because it has an insane amount of torque. Like of any of the gadgets I have, I think like the higher end scooters have a lot of torque, but I wouldn't be surprised if I could beat them on this thing. This thing accelerates really fast and it's really good for going up hills and technical off-roading and stuff when you're not feeling like just having a huge cumbersome scooter. One of my favorite toys. All right, this scooter, we all know this thing, or at least you should if you're a subscriber to my channel. This is the Wolf King. It's my second favorite scooter right next to the VSET 10 Plus. It's basically just a really heavy off-roading beast scooter. This one does have street tires, which is kind of counterintuitive. I wish it had off-road tires, but they're pretty hard to change. It's got the throttle up here, Eco Turbo, single dual lights. This is one of the few scooters that actually has like big, huge working headlights on it. Had a little fun one day and wired in a like train style air horn on the front of this scooter. So you can get a good idea of how loud it is. It's insanely loud. But yeah, the, the Cabo Wolf King is a great scooter. It's one of the few scooters with really nice working lights. It does have a, a really good stock horn too. I just felt like dinking around one day and installed that thing. It's got motorcycle style front suspension here. It's got two spring suspensions in the back that I'm not a huge fan of actually. Me, I'm pretty big. I don't know if you can tell. I'm 6'2", 210 pounds and just jumping off curbs and stuff, you can damage the rear bushings and the rear suspension. So it's kind of saggy now, but you can upgrade the rear bushings and rear springs. I might do that in a future video. We'll see. Um, this scooter tops out around 55 miles an hour. It's got a range of, I believe, 25 to 50 miles, depending on how you ride it. It's a 60 volt scooter. I forgot to mention the Gotway RS has an 1800 amp hour battery. It's a 100 volt uh, battery. This is a 72 volt battery. So the scooter has got a motor in each wheel, two 1500 watt motors, capable of 55 miles per hour, 35 amp hour, 72 volt battery, nice burly kickstand. Thing's really heavy. It's like 100 plus pound, 110, 120 pounds, but um, it's more or less waterproof. It's pretty water resistant. I've ridden it in the rain quite a bit, but if you're in the market for just a really beastly, super fast motorcycle style scooter, then the Cabo Wolf King is a great choice. All right, so here is a scooter that you guys didn't see much on the channel. This is the Dualtron Thunder. It's a 60 volt scooter capable of up to about 53 miles per hour with me on it. It's got two 1200 watt motors. Um, also the same kind of tires that were on the Cabo Wolf King, but slightly better brakes. This has got nut brakes with uh, bigger disc rotors. The scooter doesn't have a front headlight or anything like that. Um, it's kind of disappointing really in that regard. It's just got two little LEDs in the front here. It's a pretty big burly scooter though. The only reason you haven't 
seen it much on my channel is because it doesn't have a rear foot anything. For scooters that go as fast as this one does, I really feel like I need a foot something to brace my foot against so I can kind of like wedge myself into the scooter a little better. Just feels kind of unsafe. It's got rubber bushings for suspension instead of like springs or the motorcycle style like we saw on the Wolf. It's got adjustable rubber bushings in here that you can swap out with softer ones or harder ones, but they do wear down. You have to replace the bushings after a while anyways. So I forgot to show you the bars on the Cobble Wolf King do fold. It's a really cumbersome folding mechanism. This one's quite a bit easier. It's got two latches. You flip them both. You slide up the collar and then this bars fold down and clip into this little latch back here. I didn't notice until now, but there is actually a screw missing from my fender on the uh, Dualtron Thunder. Looks like it fell out when I was off-roading or something. Fun times. And you have to take the tire off to get to that screw too. <laughs> That's just super fun. So yeah, joy. That was a project. The scooter does have cool lights though. You can see it's got lights going down the stem and through the neck here and underneath. Um, brake lights are just two little LEDs and then it's got hazards that flash when you hit the brakes. It's pretty cool. They're really bright too compared to other scooter LEDs. These flashing hazards are pretty, very visible at night. Man, I really like the nut brakes too. They're so much better than the zoom ones. Just the way that they feel, the way that you can tell when, right when they grip the disc. If you're in need of a fast scooter that's pretty portable, then this would be a good option because these bars do fold down the side and also the stem folds down to the back. So pretty portable package, I guess. You could throw it in the trunk of a car. Wolf King actually gets bigger as you fold it down, so harder to, to throw that in the trunk of a car. And this is the High Boy Titan Pro. So I popped the rear tire on this thing and High Boy was pretty quick and they sent me a new tire and tube and I popped the new tube trying to install it. So that was a big bummer. But I contacted High Boy and they sent me two new tubes and a tire. So it actually did take me two more tubes to install this thing. And shout out to Matt Boggs. He showed me the zip tie method for how to change tires on scooters. And that did work to get this tire on, but man, I'm with three one foot long tire levers and this thing up on a scooter stand and me working on it for like two days, I couldn't change the tire. It was the most frustrating scooter project I've ever undertaken by f f a wide margin. If you're not too savvy with changing tires, I wouldn't recommend this scooter. I wouldn't recommend it anyways, just <laughs> it's kind of not great. So High Boy Titan Pro doesn't have the uh, trigger throttle. It's got a thumb style throttle and it reuses an e-bike controller. And it really just doesn't seem to work that well with the scooter. It's really finicky with the settings. I never could figure out what the P settings even do and High Boy doesn't even know, the manual doesn't even know. So there's a whole bunch of just gray area settings for this thing. I think it's rebranded in other countries as a Kugu Booster G1, but um, it's got rubber bushing style suspension that you cannot replace place and it's really really stiff i don't know if you can see that it's the stiffest suspension of any scooter i have that has suspension anyways um, these tires are three inches wide and they're really really hard it looks like they're off-road tires but they're more hybrid tires the scooter compares i think most closely with the varla pegasus like the varla pegasus would be a street version of an 1100 dollars scooter and this would be an off-roady type version it doesn't have a lot of torque it's a 48 volt scooter so Pretty disappointing in the torque department, but if you're just going down gravel trails or some pretty, I guess, not steep off-road sections, this would be a decent scooter. I do like the folding mechanism. Like you'd have to actually break through a really thick metal pin to um, have this thing fail on you catastrophically while riding. Oh, I forgot to mention the Cabo Wolf Warrior and the Dualtron both have full hydraulic brakes. Uh, this scooter has disc brakes, but they're cable actuated. So they're a lot harder to pull and they don't they don't actually have that much stopping power. So not that great of a scooter. The other thing about this scooter is it's got like an 11 mile range. So not great in the range department. And the battery has got a ton of voltage sag because it's a Chinese battery. The bars are really short. I don't know if you can tell. I'm 6'2", so not the best example, but unless you're like a kid or a teenager, like really short or something, not the best scooter. I wouldn't buy it. I would not recommend the High Boy Titan Pro. This is the VSET 9 Plus. It's got a pretty small battery, but it does have options to upgrade the batteries. The bars are really solid and I like how wide they are and they have like a, it's hard to see, but they're angled, like they go back a little bit and you can fold them. They're nice wide solid bars that are actually portable. So unlike the Dualtron bars that are foldable and just kind of small, these ones are nice and wide and also portable. So you get the best of both worlds. I really like the bars on this thing. Plus the grips are super comfy. It does have cable actuated disc brakes. So again, not the best stopping power, but they don't, they don't feel mushy like the High Boy Titan Pro. They feel a little better. Um, this scooter has a dual drive motor button and it also has a little whistling horn. Let's see if I can turn the scooter on and I'll show you the horn. It's kind of a joke. Why would you make that? It's like a whistle. 
The scooter is a 48 volt scooter, I believe. It's got two 650 watt motors, tops at around 25 miles an hour. It's got really springy, cushy suspension and tall bars. If I'm not in the mood to go over 30 miles an hour and I just wanna to run to the store or something, this is like my 100% favorite choice. See that suspension? Just butter. Love it. Plus the V-Set scooters have really solid folding mechanisms with like three different um, fail safe points. I also like that this V-Set has an area for your foot that's more or less curved. So it's comfortable to put your heel on. It's not gonna like completely bend your shoe at a 45 degree angle. And it's also got this nice fender in the back here for when you're riding around in the rain, it's not gonna flick stuff up on your coat. And it's really surprisingly hard to find a fender on a, like a nice fender on a scooter, so. Props to the V-set, I like the V-sets a lot. They do, they do lack in the horn department and the headlight department. That little <laughs> tiny LED right there is all you get for the headlights. But it's got nice bar space so you can mount your own headlights on here if you want. I should probably be rating these on like a scale of one to 10. So for the Gotway RS, I'm gonna give that thing a 10, love it. Cabo Wolf King, probably an eight and a half. High Boy Titan Pro, like a two. Dualtron Thunder, six. V-set nine plus eight and a half and we're moving on now to the varla pegasus this scooter is unlike all the other scooters in that it has solid tires these are just like solid chunks of rubber so you can't pop them it's got pretty stiff spring style suspension as you can see here not a lot of give there and with the solid tires it does make for a pretty bumpy ride gotta say but the scooter goes about 30 miles an hour and feels pretty solid the uh, bars are pretty hard to turn left and right. Not as hard as they were when I first got it, but it acts as like a, sort of a factory installed steering damper. So I don't know. It's a pretty neat little scooter, I guess. It's a fun, if you don't want to worry about flat tires and you have like a 10 or 15 mile commute, this is going to be a solid choice for you, I think. Um, I waterproofed this scooter too, so you can watch that video. You could do some pretty gnarly commutes in the rain on this thing, and I think you'd be fine. I do like also towards the top here, it's got a... Again, repurposed e-bike controllers, but it has a cool display up here that's like um, really bright in the daylight and you can actually see it. I don't know if you can even see the display there, but it's really bright. It's got a battery gauge and it shows miles per hour and all that stuff, but it does have a lot of voltage sag because it uses cheap Chinese cells. So that's the one downside to this battery along with the suspension. But other than that, pretty solid choice. Not No, no real complaints about it. Oh, I guess I do have a complaint about it. I lied. Stopping power. It's got cable actuated brakes again, and they're really mushy like the High Boy Titan Pro. You're going 30 miles an hour on a scooter. You don't want mushy brakes, guys. <laughs> Jumping around on this thing when it's turned on makes me want to go ride. All right, let's get this thing out of the way. So this thing is a complete menace. You saw me riding around with Richie down on his uh, Nami Bernie scooter. This is the Dualtron Storm. You can hear that creaky stem. Listen to that thing. It's got a creaky wobbly stem that wobbles this way and it also wobbles, I don't know if you can see that, it wobbles this way too. It's like the least secure feeling stem on any scooter that I've ever ridden. And strangely enough, it's also the fastest scooter I've ever ridden. This thing goes 58 miles an hour with me on it. Again, 210 pounds, so very impressive. I don't remember the specs. I think it has something like two 1800 watt or two 1600 watt motors, but again, 58 miles an hour. It's a 72 volt scooter and it has a really massive battery, like 35 amp hour, 72 volt scooter. Probably accounts for the few miles per hour over the, the uh, Cabo King because we have a bigger battery, more cells in parallel. Anyway, with this scooter, the controllers are in the rear foot plate here, which is really strange in that it's not connected to the scooter. Can you see this? The foot plate moves independently of the deck. So very strange, unique design. I'm not really sure why they did it that way. It doesn't feel like it rides any better, but it is what it is. This scooter does have a removable battery. So if you're like a DoorDash driver or something like that, you can actually pull this battery out of the scooter with a set of keys that comes with it. And then if you have the money, you can throw a new scooter or a new battery in here and then you just got a freshly charged scooter. It does have dual charging ports though. So you can charge it up pretty quick with two fast chargers. The scooter has the same design for folding as the uh, Dualtron Thunder. Just got the clip right here and you slide the collar up and the bars will fold down. This scooter is seriously lacking in the lights department other than the cool disco light. The hazards also flash when you hit the brakes and then these three red LEDs back here get brighter also. It's got LEDs in the swing arms, LEDs underneath that project the words Dualtron Storm, LEDs right here, 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 as you can see, but no headlight. <laughs> can you believe that? This is their idea of a headlight. Like it doesn't shine anything at all on the ground in front of you. So the scooter lights up like a Christmas tree and everyone can see you, but you can't see where you're going. So 58 miles an hour. Again, you guys, craziness, absolute craziness. If you're gonna buy this scooter, 
Um, it's got really good low end maneuverability and insane torque. It's got nut brakes too, which are really nice. But if you're gonna buy this scooter, you almost have to buy it with a steering damper because this thing just wants to wobble like crazy. The bars are pretty low and narrow and there's not a lot of resistance to turn them. And just at 58 miles an hour, I don't know what it is about the scooter. Something about the geometry just makes it want to wobble a lot. So it gets away from you really easily. Get a steering damper. That's my one recommendation for this thing. Also, allegedly, if you take these two screws out and put lithium grease in here and then put the two screws back in, the creaking noise goes away. But I tried it and it didn't work. So maybe I did it wrong. If you got four grand laying around, the Dualtron Storm is a great scooter. But honestly, for the price, I think I would get the Nami Bernie. Nami Bernie is a much better scooter for the price. Moving on, my absolute favorite scooter of the lineup. This is the VSET 10 Plus. It's a 60 volt scooter with a relatively small battery. I think it's only got 20 amp hours in this one, but it's just so much fun. It fits me really well, as you can see. It's got the same kind of bars. Oops. It's got the same kind of bars here as the VSET 9 Plus. I think maybe a smidgen wider. Um, an interface up here for sport mode, which will give you a few extra miles an hour. It just boosts the amps output from the controllers for like, I think 60 seconds. And then dual drive motor mode and the uh, horn which sounds just like the VSET 9 Plus. It's a huge bummer. And the headlight down there is the same as the 9 Plus 2. Slightly bigger bulb, but same brightness. Here's the horn on this thing. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. And then the uh, headlight obviously is lacking. You hold the plus button on the uh, throttle up here to get the headlight to turn on. It's not great. It's better than the uh, 9, but nowhere near as good as the Wolf. I just wish it were like twice as bright. That's all. It's good for like 15 miles an hour, but when you're going 30 miles an hour or 40, the scooter actually tops out close to, I think it was 44 with me on it. But when you're going that fast on a scooter, you need bright lights or you can outrun your headlight really easily at night. Folding mechanism, same as the 9 Plus. It's got the little latch back here that latches into the, uh, the rear foot plate. And the rear foot plate's kind of cool. It's got like little finger grooves and you can pick it up from this handle. I like that a lot. The scooter weighs about, I think it's 77 pounds. Not that hard to pick up. You can pick it up from right here and then it's got grips in the back and I don't know, not terrible. Look how nice that rear fender is. Pretty rigid and it covers the tire just long enough that you're not gonna get any splash up on your clothes. The scooter has an IP water resistance rating too. I rode it around when it was sprinkling one day. Nothing insane, but works fine. It's got 10 inch tires and they're three inches wide. They've got like a really rounded profile. So they're really good for carving and turning. Nice springy suspension. And just the ergonomics of the scooter, the length of the deck, this foot plate that kind of just goes up a little bit and then flattens out with a little rubber pad on the top. The bars that are tall and wide just fits me really well. It's a nice scooter for the price. You can get this thing under two grand for the lowest battery option. And then I think they have a 28 amp hour battery option that's pretty expensive, 2,700, but very worth it in my opinion. I think if I didn't have any scooters, knowing what I know now, if I were gonna buy a scooter, I would buy the VSET 10 plus 28 amp hour. That's the scooter I would buy. This thing right here is the Varla Eagle one, which is actually a rebranded 010 X, which is the predecessor to the VSET 10 plus. So you can see them right side by side. This is like the older brother of this thing. This is the new hip younger brother. We fold the bars down so they're not in the way as much, which we can do on this scooter. Boop. These bars do not fold down. They do on the turbo wheel Lightning, which is a rebranded 010X again, just different bars. This has the QS S4 throttle display, goes 34 miles an hour with me on it. It is a 52 volt scooter. It doesn't have an insane amount of torque, but it's got some. You could off-road this thing if you wanted to, but you definitely need to get some better tires. These skinny little street tires are not gonna do you much good off-road. I think they're specced to the same width as the V-set tires, but they're actually in person, a little bit narrower. The V-set tires flare out towards the sides and these don't, they're just round all the way around the top. Um, my complaints with this scooter are the headlights, which are just two little LEDs here, and the folding mechanism, which is a double collared clamp, but the clamp is really skinny, this collar piece. So the bars actually wiggle a little bit and they sell a rugged clamp. Um, RevRide sells it. They also sell it on Alibaba, but I don't know if it's any good quality or not. You have to experiment with that, but you can buy a rugged clamp and upgrade your clamp here to make it more solid. It's a really good scooter for the price though, honestly. It goes fast, 32 miles an hour, and it's comfy. It's got that nice springy suspension like the V-Set has. See that? It feels like the springs on this one are rated to higher pounds of tension than the V-Set. This thing is a little bit 
squishier than this. This is firmer. And the suspension for the front on this one is actually 135 millimeter, which is not a regular mountain bike style suspension. It's not a regular size you're going to find. So you can't really upgrade the front on this one, but you can do the back. The back is 150 millimeter. If you want to upgrade the rear suspension, one thing I was pretty impressed to see on this scooter is that they actually took some time and put silicone on all the water ingress holes. So this thing is actually going to be pretty water resistant, I think. The QS S4 throttle display isn't though, like water can get in here and short it out, I've heard. So um, water resistant, not waterproof. The scooter doesn't go quite as fast as the VSET. This is a 60 volt scooter. Like I said, this is 52. Um, if you're buying a 010X, which looks exactly the same as this, you can buy a 60 volt version of that scooter, but it's still not gonna go as fast as this because this one just has a 28 amp hour battery. It's gonna be much faster with the big, with the big battery model. Um, the dimensions of this thing folded are more or less the same size as the V-Set, except for the bars, they don't fold down the stem this way right here. They have this, they stay fixed and flat. I haven't really heard any complaints about this scooter, and I know that the 010X was a solid scooter. It was like, like I said, probably the most popular dual motor scooter of last year. So Varla Eagle 1, great choice for just a nice road scooter if you want to do a little bit of off-roading. I've seen videos of people off-roading this thing, and I know uh, RK9 rides. He's got a YouTube channel. He does pretty good on this thing. Shout out to you. But I guess we'll move on to the 9Bot Max. This little gem right here is just a super solid, more or less waterproof commuter scooter. It only goes 20 miles an hour, but it's got a 35 mile range. And this little thingy right here is actually supposed to hook onto the battery pack that's for the horn on my Cobble Wolf right now, but it's a range extender. So you can plug it in here and you get a few extra miles of range and some more speed and torque also. This scooter has a drum brake, which is interesting. No other scooters I own have a drum brake. It's in the front and it has an electronic brake in the back and just one motor. All the other scooters we've looked at so far have dual motors, but this scooter just has one. Not a lot of torque, obviously. It's like a 350 or 500 watt motor. I think it peaks at 800 watts, but it's just a simple commuter, like get me from point A to point B without braking ever scooter. Got a thumb throttle too, instead of the uh, finger trigger throttle. The display right here is just in the top piece of plastic. It shines through the plastic there. This scooter, I did a really thorough review on it. I range tested it. I rode it in a puddle like this deep and it held up like a champ. It's still one of my favorite scooters. Like if I didn't have all these other powerful scooters, this thing would be a totally fine choice. Analog bell, as you can see. <laughs> If you're looking at scooters and you don't want to cheap out and get something in like the $500 range that's like 350 watts and made by some off-brand company, this is a 9Bot made by Segway. It's a solid scooter. It's like really good R&D behind the design. The folding mechanism is solid. There's nothing on the scooter that breaks except for I've seen a few people break the rear fender. So, and if you buy it from RevRides, you get solid warranty support too if something does go wrong. If you lose a screw like I did on my Jewelltron Thunder Fender and you bought this scooter from RevRides, then they'll take care of you because they have a one-year warranty. This scooter is actually my girlfriend's favorite scooter until we got the VSET 9 Plus, which is now her favorite scooter. Well, I guess it's going back. So <laughs> this is going to be her favorite scooter again. A couple of little more things about the 9Bot. Um, you can actually upgrade this scooter. If you go to mymaxmods.com, they have an external battery kit, which is what this is for again. And they have like suspension and new decks and other types of accessories and stuff. But this is one of the most popular scooters in the world. And there are tons of parts and accessories out there, like 3D printed parts that you can make and all sorts of cool stuff stickers and decals and aftermarket fenders so if you're looking for just a super easy tank of a scooter with like upgradable parts commuter scooter under 20 miles an hour i recommend the 9bot max all right moving on this is the emu cruiser we did a few a series of videos on this thing it has got cable actuated brakes a 650 watt motor i think it peaks closer to like a thousand watts or something like that but it's got a top speed of 28 miles an hour i think or 25. it's got a little key here with the voltage readout and a thumb throttle which is unique for all my scooters the only other scooters with thumb throttles are the uh, nine bot max and the varla pegasus but they're different than this one this one goes in those other ones go down down. So this is just a different style. Um, this is an aftermarket thing that I installed, though it does come with a trigger throttle. This, the new version of the scooter that came out this year has a thousand watt motor. I think it's a little bit zippier, torquier, but ironically enough, that's actually one of the reasons why people don't like this scooter because the, the uh, throttle is really on off jerky for the, the style of scooter it is. You think it'd be a lot smoother, but it's not. It gets smooth as you go faster, but at lower speeds, this thing's got quite a bit of pep. 
This scooter is pretty good. It's water resistant, but it does have a lot of things that come loose on it. Like this folding mechanism in general is just kind of janky. The suspension, I really am not a fan of the front suspension that looks like this. There's one that looks like this, and then there's one that has two springs. And the types of scooters that have those are just generally junk. Really not a fan of the front suspension, but the back is all right. You can upgrade this too with the mountain bike style dampened suspension, but it just doesn't have a lot of travel in it. So could be better. Um, down here, there's a whole bunch of screws for the folding mechanism that come loose all the time. Like you pretty much have to put Loctite and even then you got to check them. Like right now they're loose. See my front, my stem wiggles. It's because these three screws down here are loose. It's pretty low to the ground. It scrapes down curbs and stuff, but this thing has an insane range. It's a 48 volt scooter with 35 amp hour battery and it gets like 60 miles of real world range with me on it. I'm 200 pounds. Here's what the suspension looks like. You <laughs> can hear it creaking away. Uh, plastic fender on the back here and plastic fender on the front, which actually already broke off. You can see it mounts on here and then on the other side and it covers the back, but mine busted off. I think it broke off when it was folded in the car actually, so not the fault of the riding really so much, but it's just a cheap fender. The rear one's a little more solid, but still plastic. I do like that it's so long that it covers the whole rear of the tire though. This is another good fender like the V-sets. The V-set and this scooter are really the only ones with good fenders. The Cobble Wolf King, for being like such a huge burly off-road scooter, really doesn't have good fenders. Like they make 3D printed ones that you can print off and obviously put on yourself, but from the factory, it gets mud and water all over your clothes and pants. Like the fenders on the Cobble Wolf King and the Warrior and the GT and all that are just ridiculous, useless. This scooter, on the other hand, has good fenders out of the box. Cable actuated brakes, and they do feel pretty mushy, but they work pretty well, I think just because the rotors are a little bigger. 145 millimeter again, I think. Um, nice big deck, even though it does have a plastic fender back here, nothing to brace your foot against. The scooter doesn't go so fast that you need a, a foot brace like that. It doesn't have a whole lot of torque and the deck has so much real estate as is that you don't really need anything else. It's just comfortable like that to stand on. It's a really nice commuter scooter. If you're in the need of a scooter that's more or less waterproof and has a ton of range, the eMove Cruiser is your scooter. This thing, Cabo Mantis Pro SE from Voro Motors. It's got gold swing arms like the uh, Cabo King you saw. It's got pretty stiff spring style suspension. There's one spring in the front, one in the back. It's a 60 volt scooter that tops out actually around 32 miles an hour, so not very fast. And it has a very small battery. It's an 18 amp hour battery. So it's the same size as the Eagle One and higher voltage. So it gets even less range than the Eagle One. Ugh. The scooter has dual thousand watt motors and I put on these wider uh, hybrid off-road knobby tires. I really like these tires. The scooter is really slim and compact, but the bars don't fold down the side. I would really like it if they did do that. Um, for me, this scooter is just like the sleeper off-road mobile. It's got enough torque to make it fun to ride off-road. And with these slightly widened knobbier tires, it's really nimble off-road. Like just the scooter itself is really narrow and easy to turn and small. It's got bars just wide enough to ride and the scooter itself is super small, so it makes navigating technical trails really easy. And that's pretty much all I use it for. If I'm gonna go for a long cruiser ride or just a short commuter ride or any other type of ride, I've got other types of devices and there are better devices for that. But this thing is just for like technical off-road trail riding for me. I know lots of people use this as their daily, but it just doesn't have the range that I need. I'm a bigger guy and I'm looking at like 15 miles range with this if I'm lucky. Okay, moving on. Inside my fire sack is where I keep my Gotway MSP. Another unicycle. This unicycle is pretty slow. Tops out around 34 with me on it before it starts beeping and freaking out. Um, this thing actually got dipped into a river. I made a whole video on that, but I replaced the battery and the motor on it and I can't bring myself to get rid of it, even though I should because it's essentially the baby brother of the Gotway RS that I have over there. So this one has a street tire. It's got an 1800 watt hour battery, pretty small little pedals there. These are just the stock side pads that come with it. It's got some pedal dip issues. When you uh, lean forward and you go around corners and stuff, this, the pedals have a hard time staying level with this but the reason I keep it is just in case my Gotway RS goes kaput. It's still a really fun wheel because it has a ton of torque. This one and the RS are just so zippy. You can lean into this thing as hard as you want and I guess you can overpower this one, but the RS, you can't overpower it. You can like Superman over the front and it just doesn't turn off. It's really weird feeling. This thing has a charge port right here on the front, on the top, and it also has a USB charger right there. And it has a cutoff switch on the side. You can push this button and it turns off the motor so that you can lift the unicycle up and throw it, like maneuver it up and down stairs. But then when you let go of the button, the motor activates and turns back on so it'll spin. It's definitely outdated though. I don't think you can buy the MSP anymore. 
the RS is the latest and greatest, but I still love this baby, even though I have to store it in a fire sack because so many of these things have caught on fire in people's houses. There we go. All right, here's a scooter you shouldn't buy. This is the Evercross scooter. Looks cool, right? Looks like the Emu Cruiser, but with a seat, but it's not. Oh, I guess the battery's completely dead in it, so I can't show you, but it has, the only redeeming quality of the scooter is that it has cool rainbow underglowy lights. Everything else is more or less garbage on this scooter. It has the same bars as the Emu Cruiser, so I'll give it that. It's got a spring in the seat, it's pretty comfy, but the suspension in the front is just complete garbage. I broke it going off a curb. I know the Jimmy Chang guy broke his too, or I guess he was surprised he didn't break it. Full Folding mechanism is like a crappy version of the E-Move Cruiser with less like security, less screws, and it has a little safety pin, a little tiny pin over on the side. But if this pin comes out, this thing is really easy to accidentally fold and unfold on yourself. You're seated, so your feet are already sitting right here, and you can step on this thing and fold the scooter while you're riding, just cruising along. Oops. So yeah, uh, don't recommend the Evercross scooter. Bars are always really wiggly no matter how tight they are. I think it topped out at like, doesn't matter how fast miles per hour and it got less than 10 miles of range. So pretty disappointed in the scooter. They actually sent me two of them to review. And as you may or may not know, no video on the channel of this scooter because I only make videos of scooters that I would buy and I wouldn't buy this. Maybe I should make a warning video. <laughs> that would be a more fitting video for the Evercross scooter. Warning, do not buy. This thing is one of my more fun toys. You saw me sitting on it in the intro. My girlfriend and I love riding this thing. She sits right here, I sit right here, and we cruise around. Her feet go in this little hole right here and she sits right here and I ride. We look ridiculous, but it's very fun to ride around on. It's a really practical little machine too. Pops out around, I think under 15 miles an hour. It's only got 10 miles of range, but it's got this cool basket in the back so you can take it to the store and stuff. And it's got a key fob here because it actually has an alarm built into it. So if you touch it while the alarm's activated, it'll, you know, it's got a siren inside that goes off. We've ridden it in the rain a little bit and see it's kind of muddy down here, but the fenders work really well. The bike in general works, works really well. Um, the only, my only complaints with it are that I wish the motor was a little more powerful it had struggles with hills and the battery. This whole thing could be full of battery. I've seen people customize these to a 72 volt bike and this huge thing is full of battery, but obviously this is just the stock version. I don't know the voltage on this. I wanna say 36 volts. This piece right here, the bars, is the only piece that actually folds on the bike, so it's not exactly compact or portable, but it's just so fun to ride. This would be good for like, this is just an anyone machine. This is a very practical little bike. Fido actually reached out to me recently and asked me if I wanted to review their latest bike. So I might do that. I don't know why I like it so much. It's just fun to ride, it's something different. Okay, last but not least, this is the machine with the single most miles on it of anything in my lineup, the Veteran Sherman Unicycle. This thing is crazy, 100 volt wheel, 32 amp hour battery at 100 volts is just massive. This whole thing is just full of batteries on both sides. It has four big massive battery packs. The controller's on the top, it's got a little speedo readout here. It does have a nice headlight built in. It's got strobes too, to turn on. But I've got this other headlight mounted here because I'm in the road regularly going like 50 miles an hour with this unicycle and I don't take any chances. I've also got blinkers here on the roll bars, which this thing does also have. It's got bars that go around. You can pick it up from the front and the back. I also installed these little aftermarket bumpers here. So if the unicycle does cut out on me, these bumpers hit the ground first and it doesn't break anything on the actual unicycle itself. You can see there, we've got integrated taillight, brake light, blinker setup. I've also got two other uh, blinking strobes back here because as I said, I don't take any chances. This thing has a fender which works really well and this panel right here is waterproof. So the wheel has a really great water resistance ability. The motor itself might get a little rusty after a while and water can run down the trolley handle but it doesn't actually get on the board inside. So it's pretty good for riding around in the rain. This thing is crazy. It goes, um, what was the fastest I got on it? The fastest I've been on this thing is 46 miles an hour, but on a unicycle, that's just like, you gotta screw loose. Because I own this unicycle, I don't think I'll be buying any other unicycles anytime soon. I'm not gonna buy like a Commander or the Eagle or the S20 that's coming out. I use this thing for my street high-speed cruisings when I've got errands to run or just a really far ride. And then I use my RS when I wanna go off-roading or do some sport style stuff. So between those two unicycles, I don't need anything else. As you can see, it's got a trolley handle. It's pretty easy to use. It's got two charging ports in the back here. No USB ports to charge anything with, but it's a trade-off in all this electric wheel game stuff. So can't always get what you want. I do wish that this thing had slightly bigger pedals. 
That's just my, my common complaint with all unicycles because I have giant feet, but I upgraded the pedals on my RS. They're much bigger. It's got a knobby, huge knobby tire, the Kenda tire that comes with the thing. And this one has, I think 3000 miles on it. My first one got 4,000 or something. I'm about to change this one so it would make sense. But yeah, I've got like close to 7,000 miles on this wheel, I think. That's insane to think about. Yeah, this thing is more or less a tank. It's appropriately named. This thing is my industrial traveling wheel. Well, that sums it up. I have quite the mess to clean up down here now. I hope you had fun looking through my scooter garage. Maybe you learned a thing or two about which type of device you might gravitate towards if you haven't bought one yet, or you just had fun looking at all the different toys that are out there. We've got a whole bunch of new gadgets to come on the channel, so make sure to subscribe. You can catch all the new. I've got the Cobble Wolf King GT and the Dualtron Storm Limited probably coming up soon. If you have any questions about these scooters that I didn't answer, I'm sure there's a million of things I didn't cover. Just ask down in the comment section below and I'll be pretty active in the comments and try and respond to everybody's questions. But yeah, that more or less sums it up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys for the next video.